Module 3, Lesson 13. Take a moment to read the objective to yourself. That's the first problem we could think about. Here we have 1 half plus 3 fourths. Of course, we could solve this using um, getting common denominators, using paper and pencil. We do know also, however, that we could look at this kind of thinking about money. If we have one half or one half of a dollar, we would be thinking about 50 cents. If we had three quarters of a dollar, we would be talking about three quarters, which is worth 75 cents. And if we put those two together, we would have 125 cents, which is more than a dollar. In fact, 125 cents is one dollar and 25 cents. So we know that the sum of one half plus three fourths would be um, one and one fourth, it looks like. And like I was saying before, we could do our math where it is that we got two fourths plus three fourths equaling five fourths, which does equal one and one fourth. However, we should be thinking of our problems in more than one way. So again, it is kind of like adding 50 cents with 75 cents to be able to get our answer there. Here we have a new problem. We have 1 half plus 3 sevenths, and we're asked whether or not this is greater than 1 or less than 1. Even drawing a number line, it may or may not be accurate to determine whether or not this is bigger than 1 or less than 1. I would be thinking of this number right here with 3 sevenths. I also can't think quite of money as well. And then so the key right here is if 3 sevenths is bigger or smaller than a half. Because if it was bigger than a half, then we would know that the sum of it with a half would be greater than 1. So let's just compare 1 half with 3 sevenths. And in comparing them, we would have to get a common denominator to be able to compare like units. So an equivalent fraction for 3 halves is 6 fourteenths. And we're getting a common denominator. So 1 half is also equal to 7 fourteenths. So we know that 7 fourteenths is bigger than 6 fourteenths, meaning that 3 sevenths, the equivalent of 6 fourteenths, is less than 1 half. Now, our equivalents here, then, if we're thinking about this, 7 fourteenths and 6 fourteenths would only be 13 fourteenths, which is actually less than 1. We know that we're adding a fraction that's actually less than a half. So that's our reasoning there. We couldn't think of money here because we're not really sure what three-sevenths of a dollar is, even though we're sure of what one-half of a dollar is. Here I'm asked another problem. One and one-seventh minus five-eighths. Is it more than a half or less than a half? Let's go ahead and do our work here. Let's make one and one-seventh into an improper fraction. So we have eight-sevenths minus five-eighths. We'll multiply by the other denominator. Looks like the easiest approach to take in this case. 8 times 8 is 64. 7 times 8 is 56. So 1 and 1 seventh does equal 64 56. And I'm subtracting 35 56 from it. I know that 64 minus 34 would be 30. But since I'm subtracting 35 from it, then the answer is 29 or 29 56. Is that more than a half? or less than a half. So I have to actually, to compare these, I would take, it's not right there, I'm trying to compare 2956 with 1 half. And then so I would need a common denominator. In this case, let's get to 56, because I already have 56 there. And in this case, that would be multiplied by 28, which is half of 56. So, I'm comparing 2956 with 2856, and I know that 2956 is bigger than that. 2956 is what 1 and 1 seventh minus 5 eighths is worth. So, I know that this is more than 1 half, just slightly more. In fact, it's only 1 56 more than 1 half. Here's another type of problem that you might see, where it is that you are asked to compare these two values here with a greater than, less than, or equal. 
one of the things that we will have to do is to get a common denominator. We've got an expression over here, and we've just got a mixed number over here. So we will take our um, expression over here and solve it. Let's reorder it. So we have 5 plus a third plus 4 plus 4 fifths. 5 and 4 is 9 plus a third plus 4 fifths. In this case, we've got 9 and a third here, and then we've also got plus 4 fifths. We know 4 fifths isn't quite 1, and then so if we had 1 and 9 and a third, then it would be equal to 10 and a third, but we're not quite there. In fact, it looks like we're 1 fifth lower than 10 and a third. So this will be less than for sure. I could follow through with my work just to make sure of what I'm doing here. 1 third is also equal to 5 fifteenths, multiplying by 5 in the numerator and denominator. Multiplying by 3 in the numerator and denominator, I get 12 fifteenths plus 9. So that's 9 plus 17 fifteenths, which equals 10 and 2 fifteenths. So I'm trying to compare 10 and 2 fifteenths and 10 and 1 third. Mm -hmm you'll notice that, hey, whole numbers are the same, so I'm just comparing 2 fifteenths with 1 third. And then if I multiply by 5 and multiply by 5, I'm now comparing 10 and 5 fifteenths with 10 and 2 fifteenths, and I know that 10 and 2 fifteenths is smaller than 10 and 5 fifteenths. You'll notice that I got a common denominator there to be able to compare those mixed numbers. So the key is to evaluate expressions to be able to determine whether things are greater than, less than, or equal. So show that work. Work these out on a piece of scratch paper, then bring that scratch paper in. I've got two problems for you. Here are your two problems. Let's evaluate this portion first. And then we'll be looking at whether or not it's bigger or smaller than one and a half. Remember to get common denominators. So we're looking at four minus three plus the five eighths minus the one fifth. I did take an extra step there. Four minus three is one. We're adding the five eighths, but we're subtracting one fifth. Getting a common denominator, it looks like we can do 40. So that's one and 25 fortieths, subtracting 8 fortieths from that, which will equal 1 and 17 fortieths. Now to get this also into fortieths, that's the 1 and a half, we'll multiply by 20 for the fractional part in the numerator and denominator. So that would be equal to 1 and 20 fortieths, so that 1 and 17 fortieths is less than 1 and 20 fortieths. Notice again, we got a common denominator. Here we're trying to compare 8 and a fourth, which we can rewrite as 8 and 2 eighths, along with the other one, 16 and 3 eighths minus 7 and 3 fourths. I will rewrite this out as 16 plus 3 eighths minus and I'm going to take one extra step here, 7 minus 6 eighths. I'm going to regroup here, so we get 16 minus 7 plus 3 eighths minus 6 eighths. So 16 minus 7 is 9. Let me show my work up here. We're adding 3 eighths, and then we are subtracting 6 eighths. So actually, if we look at that, that means we're actually just subtracting 3 eighths. So if we add 6 eighths and then travel to the right 6 eighths and then travel back 3 eighths, we will just be subtracting 3 eighths. So that is equal to 8 and 5 eighths. So we're comparing 8 and 5 eighths with 8 and 2 eighths. And in this case, 8 and 2 eighths is less than 8 and 5 eighths.
So the key is to show that work, get common denominators, to be able to compare those mixed numbers to compare different expressions.